If myths relieve your fear of death, you're free to believe them. It's a free country. Not for long, my friend. Not for long. What do you mean, Dr. Elijah, by not for long? Do you expect me to believe that our American freedoms will be lost? Expect you to believe me? Not at all. In fact, you won't. But you will soon witness firsthand the end of your God-given rights, including the right to truth from elected officials, from the media, schools, and churches. The right to truth that enables you to make good family and health care decisions through truthfully informed medical consent. The right to express truthful opinions or speak out against lies and corruption. The right to protect yourself or expect protection from those in charge. The right to worship the one true God. And with that, your very God-given right to live whether you are unborn or elderly, sick or challenged, and soon, simply for not agreeing to let those in power tyrannize over you. Soon, predatory fornication will be called love, murder and your sex will be called choice, and God's truth will be called hate. Your high IQ has driven you mad, Dr. Elijah. When it never happens, what will you say? Nothing, because I will observe the tragedy from a place that those without faith insist does not exist. I will witness the slaughter of humanity as it begs its idols, its false gods of false science, false morality, and failing health, to save it when they won't, even if they could have. Such is the nature of the father of lies. <laughs> Has a Dr. Ludwig explained to you the science of how climate change, overpopulation, disease, famine, and shortages threaten human existence? Well, those theories I once supported are precisely what I disproved in the data that Heyman destroyed, just as Dr. Elijah predicted. The plagues you've mentioned will no doubt occur, but the reality behind their being man-made is not in the way that we were told. I know where you're going with this. You judgmental holy roller types are about to tell me that it's man-made in the sense of man's sins against God, aren't you? Knock it off, Arius. Let him talk. Dr. Ludwig, if your findings Dr. Heyman stole are accurate, why would he have a problem with truth? For the same reason our enemy would put a spell over you, as you just experienced, so you can't defend yourselves or others. I'm sure there's a logical explanation for our being paralyzed without having to resort to some religious delusions. Come to think of it, Dr. Elijah, maybe it's not Dr. Heyman, but you and Miss Mary who are casting a spell over us and Dr. Ludwig. Perhaps that's why Dr. Ludwig saw the two of you predicting this in a dream before he had ever met either of you. Isn't that what you told us, Dr. Ludwig? It is, and yes, everything Dr. Elijah foretold in that dream has come true so far. So correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Ludwig, because of one dream you suddenly refute your own Nobel Prize winning theories regarding greenhouse gas emissions, cross-species macroevolution mutating upwards, impossible viral mutations that can occur naturally, the perils of human overpopulation, and humanity's need for artificial intelligence to govern us. Because of one dream about these two, all the brilliant books you've written are suddenly untrue, and that humanity's demise will occur on account of demonic influence? If that's not a spell being cast over you, what the heck is? No wonder Dr. Heyman stole it. He had to protect it from its once brilliant author gone goofy. So who are these mysterious characters anyways who suddenly appear out of nowhere to set the path straight? This was a quiet place prior to the arrival of Elijah and Mary, wouldn't you say? Intimidated by Dr. Elijah's undeniable display of power over Haven's spell, Arius threateningly moves in on Mary to confiscate the notes she has been taking. But before he can snatch the notepad from her hands, she flips it around to show everyone a sketch while steadying her hand to draw the last line. Dr. Ludwig, in your dream, did the place you saw me come from happen to look like this? At the moment she completes the last line in the drawing of her studio, the wall clock begins spinning rapidly forward in time, and as everyone watches in astonishment, Mary fades into a blur and disappears from their sight.